It's good to have all of you here in the sanctuary and those joining us via live stream. We're grateful that you came out uh, today. And in just a moment, we're going to hear to God be the glory. And that's why we're here, to worship Him and to glorify Him. Let's open with a word of prayer. We'll get started. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your grace in our lives. We thank You that we can come together like this to enjoy such beautiful worship music. Thank You for Elizabeth and her giftedness to lead us in this way during this hour. Just thank You for this opportunity and indeed to God be the glory. We give You great praise in Jesus' name, amen. Let's all welcome Elizabeth Hildebrand, our church organist.
I trust that brought a few goosebumps. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Did you know that that hymn has been called the national anthem of Christendom? Did you know that? Let me give you a little bit more background here and then a little story pertaining to this hymn. The lyrics, written by Edward Perronet, first appeared in the November 1779 issue of the Gospel Magazine, which was edited by the author of Rock of Ages, Augustus Toplady. Soon after this hymn came out, Reverend E.P. Scott went to India as a missionary. One day he passed a man of unusual appearance. He was a man from a wild mountain tribe unreached by the gospel. Reverend Scott prayed over the matter and against the pleading of his friends decided to visit the tribe. As he neared their village, he was ambushed by a war party and they seized him. Spears were pointed at his heart. With no hope of escape, Scott calmly opened his violin case, breathed a prayer, and began to sing, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. At the third stanza, every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball to him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. He opened his eyes at that moment. The warriors stood in tears and their spears lowered. Mr. Scott was allowed into their village at that point, and he spent two years among them, and many of them came to Christ. Isn't that a neat story? just some backdrop and the repercussions of this beautiful hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. What a great Savior we have. What a neat story that is. And it's interesting to learn the backdrop of some of these hymns, isn't it? But I wanted to, to do that today just to remind us that the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 10, verses 14 and 15, he says this, and think about Edward Perronet and this Reverend Scott going out to this tribe with the holiday season coming up, Thanksgiving and Christmas, to think about ourselves. Who are we reaching out to with the hope of the gospel? Romans 10, 14 and 15, Paul says, how then are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? How are they to believe in him whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without a preacher? But how are they to preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. The good news of the gospel. I want to challenge us that as Thanksgiving and Christmas approach, that we would be about the business to bring the good tidings of the hope of the gospel as Reverend Scott did to that tribe. There are people around you, where you live, your neighborhoods, the assisted care facility, maybe where you're living, that don't know Christ. So let's be mindful to bring the hope of good news of the Lord Jesus Christ to people around us this holiday season coming up here in November and December because the world needs Christ. I wanted to mention to you also, just by way of reminder, to take your, your hymnal that's in front of you, if you want to follow along, to look on your bulletin, and you can follow along, just go to the index with some of the hymns that Elizabeth are playing, and you can follow along just like, all hail the power of Jesus' name. For example, if you take your hymnal, you can turn to page 58. She's going to lead us. This is my Father's world. So you can follow along with some of the hymns with the hymn in front of you.
What a great God and King we have. Amen? If you've never placed your faith and trust in Christ, we would urge you to do so. Romans 6.23 capsulates the gospel in such a beautiful form, for the wages of our sin is death, separation from God. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God created us, but we all fell into sin. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, we all understand that. We say the wrong things, do the wrong things, and that's why Christ came, to redeem us. And as you look up at the cross above you, what a beautiful representation. That cross is empty. Christ was raised from the dead on behalf of sinners such as you and me. So we want to urge you to place your faith and trust in Christ, to have that hope, because we are His creatures, and we want to worship Him. That's how He designed us, to give Him all the glory. He's such a great God and King, and we want you to have that hope of Jesus Christ in your heart and mind. In closing, just a couple announcements to reiterate what Greg and Brittany shared with us at the beginning of the concert, some upcoming uh, ministries here uh, in the sanctuary and other places here in the holiday seasons coming up. Uh, our next senior adult luncheon, if you look on the back of your bulletin, our next senior adult luncheon will be November 17th before Thanksgiving. Okay, we're not going to have a concert here next month. In lieu of that, we're having on Sunday, November 20th, again before Thanksgiving, that's Sunday, November 20th, a Thanksgiving praise evening service at 6 p.m. So you'll want to mark your calendars. In lieu of coming to an 11 o'clock concert next month, we're going to have November 20th, a Thanksgiving praise evening service at 6 p.m. And then also, as they mentioned, December 4th is coming the Advent organ concert that evening, and then December 11th is the choir concert. So mark your calendar for those upcoming dates, and then, of course, the Christmas Eve services here are wonderful at Calvary Church, so we would invite you to come to those. So if you um, you can check the website for these dates uh, in the days ahead in case you forget, okay? So our next senior adult luncheon will be November 17th. Let's thank Elizabeth one more time, shall we? It's such a beautiful <laughs> concert. Thank you. She graciously comes to play each month for us to use her gifts for God's glory, and we're so thankful for her and her ministry here at Calvary Church. Well, we're glad you came. Those of you watching on live stream, we're grateful that you uh, tuned in with us today. For those of you who are staying for our senior adult luncheon, um, those of you who need a little extra time, I'll excuse you first. If you'll make your way down the hallway, if you need to use the elevators, we have some of our volunteers there to help and assist you to go up to the elevators to the third floor, to the crown room. And the rest of you who don't need assistance, you can use the escalators to go up to the third floor and go around to the crown room. And the rest of you who are not staying for lunch can have some fellowship here and be safe going home. Thanks again for coming. God bless you.